Praise be Jesus Christ. Amen. We come to Our Lady of Guadalupe on her feast day with troubled and heavy hearts. Our nation is going through a crisis which threatens its very future as free and democratic. The worldwide spread of Marxist materialism, which has already brought destruction and death to the lives of so many, and which has threatened the foundations of our nation for decades, and now seems to seize the governing power over our nation. To attain economic gains, we as a nation have permitted ourselves to become dependent upon the Chinese Communist Party, an ideology totally opposed to the Christian foundations upon which families and our nation remain safe and prosper. I speak of the United States of America, but evidently many other nations are in the throes of a similar, most alarming crisis. Then there is the mysterious Wuhan virus about whose nature and prevention the mass media daily give us conflicting information. What is clear, however, is that it has been used by certain forces inimical to families and to the freedom of nations to advance their evil agenda. These forces tell us that we are now the subjects of the so-called Great Reset, the new normal, which is dictated to us by their manipulation of citizens and nations through ignorance and fear. Now we are supposed to find in a disease and its prevention the way to understand and direct our lives rather than in God and in his plan for our salvation. The response of many bishops and priests and of many faithful has manifested a woeful lack of sound catechesis. So many in the church seem to have no understanding of how Christ continues his saving work in times of plague and of other disasters. What is more, our Holy Mother Church, the spotless Bride of Christ, in which Christ is ever at work for our eternal redemption, is beset by reports of moral corruption, especially in matters of the Sixth and Seventh Commandments, which seem to increase by the day. In our own nation, the reports about Theodore McCarrick have rightly tempted many devoted Catholics to question the shepherds who, in accord with Christ's plan for the Church, are to be their secure guides by teaching the truths of the faith, by leading them in the fitting worship of God and in prayer to Him, and by guiding them by means of the Church's perennial discipline. Too often, the faithful receive nothing in response, or a response which is not grounded in the unchanging truths regarding faith and morals. They receive responses that seem to come not from shepherds, but from secular managers. The confusion regarding what the Church truly teaches and demands of us in accord with her teaching generates ever greater divisions within the body of Christ. All of this cripples the Church in her mission of witness to divine truth and divine love at a time when the world has never needed more the Church to be a beacon. In encountering the world, the Church falsely wants to accommodate herself to the world 
instead of calling the world to conversion in obedience to the divine law written on every human heart and revealed in its fullness in the redemptive incarnation of God the Son. These grievous troubles, of course, present a formidable challenge to our daily Christian living. The impact of the crisis in the world and in the church is profound for all of us. Many are enduring the most painful suffering, physical, emotional, and spiritual, which such a situation necessarily causes. At a time when we need to be close to one another in Christian love, worldly forces would isolate us and have us believe that we are alone and dependent upon secular forces, which would make us slaves to their godless and murderous agenda. Sin embargo, no estamos solos. Tenemos a la Virgen Madre de Dios, nuestra Madre en la Iglesia. Con confianza presentémosle nuestros corazones afligidos, atraídos por su Inmaculada Corazón en la solemnidad de Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe. Nos acercamos hoy a ella en peregrinación. Maria de Guadalupe nos habla como le habló a San Juan Diego cuando parecía derrotado por la enfermedad mortal de su tío Juan Bernardino con el que vivía y del que se ocupaba y por el gran desafío de llevar adelante la difícil tare tarea que Nuestra Señora le confiaba. Antes las expresiones de impotencia e imposibilidad de San Juan Diego, Nuestra Señora lo respondió. No estoy yo aquí, yo que tengo el honor de ser tu madre, ¿No estás bajo mi sombra y res resguardo? ¿No soy yo la fuente de tu alegría? ¿No estás en el hueco de mi manto, en el cruce de mis brazos? Ella nos dice estas palabras también a, nosot a nosotros. María Inmaculada es la mujer vestida de sol cuya hijo estaba destinado a salvar al mundo del poder del maligno. Ella nos muestra la verdad de la que el Apocalipsis testifica que en el nacimiento de su divino hijo, él... Fue elevado hasta Dios y hasta su trono. Nuestro Señor asegura que Dios Padre cumplió por la encarnación redentora de Dios Hijo su promesa de salvación eterna, la promesa renovada a través de las palabras del profeta Zacarías. Yo vengo a habitar en medio de ti, oráculo del Señor. Unamos nuestros corazones afligidos con el Inmaculada Corazón de la Madre de Dios, nuestra Madre, a quien el Arcángel Gabriel la llamó con razón, llena de gracia. En medio de tantos males, la Virgen María recibe nuestros corazones e, y los lleva a la fuente de su curación y fuerza al Sagrado Corazón de Jesús. Dios y hombre, Hijo de Dios, 
e hijo suyo. María nos invita a, a, a elevar nuestros corazones al glorioso corazón traspasado de Jesús, al único en que, al que encontraremos la salvación. Nuestra Señora quiso que su casa se construyera aquí, precisamente para tiempos difíciles como los que estamos viviendo. En su santuario, ella atrae a las almas hacia su Hijo, nuestro Salvador, dirigiéndonos las siguientes palabras, hagan todo lo que Él les diga. Su iglesia en este lugar es un faro que nos conduce a la salvación eterna. Constituye la imagen de nuestra vocación, de la vocación de la iglesia universal. Ser un faro que refleje la luz brillante de la verdad y del amor divino en el mundo que refleje la realidad de Cristo sentado en gloria a la derecha del Padre y al mismo tiempo morando con nosotros en la iglesia. Yes, our hearts are understandably heavy, but Christ, through the intercession of his virgin mother, lifts up our hearts to his own, renewing our trust in him who has promised us eternal salvation in the church. He will never be unfaithful to his promises. He will never abandon us. Let us not be beguiled by the forces of the world and by false prophets. Let us not abandon Christ and seek our salvation in places where it never can be found. Let us never forget the words by which Our Lady identified herself in her first apparition to St. Juan Diego. No, no, for sure, my dearest and youngest son, that I am truly the ever-perfect Holy Virgin Mary, who has the honor to be the mother of the one true God for whom we all live, the creator of people, the Lord of all around us, and of what is close to us, the Lord of heaven, the Lord of earth. I want very much that they build my sacred little house here in which I will show him. I will exalt him upon making him manifest. I will give him to all people in all my personal love. Him that is my compassionate gaze, him that is my help, him that is my salvation. May the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe here be always a worthy instrument by which the Immaculate Heart of Mary draws hearts to herself and brings them to the glorious pierced heart of Jesus to the only source of healing and strength in this life and unto eternal life. Before the final blessing, we will have the induction of pages and the knighting of pages in Our, Lord, Our Lady's Knights of the Altar, the boys and young men who serve Our Lord during the sacred liturgy in this church. Let us pray, invoking the intercession of Our Lady and of St. Juan Diego, that the Nicholas Gottner, Michael Rowe, and Thomas Wilson, who are to be inducted as pages, will persevere in their preparation to become Our Lady's Knights of the Altar, and that Jan Perat and Charlie Ufri, who are to be knighted, 
will be always faithful to the high mission which they have accepted. May the holiness of their service of our Lord at the altar, under the guidance and protection of Our Lady, be reflected in every aspect of their daily lives. Bajo el manto amoroso del Inmaculada Corazón de Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe, levantemos ahora nuestros corazones afligidos al glorioso corazón traspasado de Jesús, confiando que la promesa de salvación de nuestro Señor se cumplirá, entreguemos nuestros corazones completamente a Él en su Santa Iglesia. Confiemos en que en su corazón encontraremos la sabiduría y la fuerza para vivir estos tiempos difíciles con los ojos fijos en él y en la salvación que a través de la divina maternidad de la Virgen María él nos trajo al mundo. Heart of Jesus, salvation of those who trust in thee, have mercy on us. Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mother of America, and Star of the New Evangelization, pray for us. Saint Joseph, Protector of Holy Church, pray for us. Saint Juan Diego, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.